Yeah, so today we are very happy to have uh, two honorable guests here with us sharing their experience in filmmaking. I mean, they're from different generations. I mean, they have different experiences. I mean, but of course, they have something in common. I mean, in terms of creativity, I mean, in terms of filmmaking. And they also have been to Berlinale. I mean, for Mr. Hans from, I think he has been to Berlinale, which is the Berlin Film Festival happening in every February for a lot of times. But for Vicky, I mean, he was also there like uh, two years ago. I mean, for the very first time with his very first feature film. Yeah, so they can also share with us their experience in Berlinale and the film festivals. And uh, after their sharing, I mean, we are going to have the Q&A session open to the floor. I mean, so if you have any questions, I mean, if you want to raise it in Cantonese or Mandarin, you can just voice it out and then I will translate them to, uh, to them, yeah. So first of all, let's start with, uh, I mean, yeah, so both of you, have been making films like for <laughs> yeah for a long time for Mr. Hans from and for you I mean it's relatively new I mean you are in the industry I mean so uh since we are talking about the cinematography and uh, the script yeah so maybe we can start with how you visualize the script when you first receive it and then how do you make it into your frames or into the direction I speak first right okay <laughs> sorry. And usually, I, I'm as a director. Usually, I uh, describe myself as a translator. I'm tra actually translating the text into the image. But uh, for me, it's a little bit different because I used to um, like drawing in my secondary school. I was like copying the comic book, the whole thing. Yeah, I was copying the whole comic book. By that time, I didn't know I will be a filmmaker. But uh, by that time, I I wish become a uh, a comic uh, painter or something like that, something related to art. And uh, after I study uh, journalism and communication, I went to London Film Academy to get some film training there. And I was um, my aim as was a uh, as a cinematographer. I want to tell a story by the camera, and I was uh, shooting sixty mil by that time. And I re really love it because uh, the camera, the smell of the film, and the sound of the film, yeah, yeah, the smell of the film is totally different now. I mean, when I'm shooting digitally, and there's no sound, no smell, I mean, it's not the way. <laughs> and, uh, but in between uh, my study, I, I find that I may be uh, more interesting and to telling the story, not only uh, holding the camera. So, I mean, I developed uh, few projects and then go to pitching and I and I won it and I direct my short film there. So by that time I start to uh, as a filmmaker and in, in a directing journey. Until now, so I mean my background is like this. So I'm very very interested in cinematography. So my film, my sec, uh, my first short film is about the cinematographer. Yeah. Yes. So yes. That's, that's very interesting. Yeah. yeah, so for that one, I mean, uh, actually back in 2010, I mean, before Studio Film Trevisi, uh, I mean, Vicky has already made a short film and uh, won the Best Cinematography Award in the Fresh Wave short film competition. So maybe you can check it out. On. Yeah. So why I mentioned uh, when I was a kid, I, was, I used to like drawings, because now, I mean, uh, you asked me how to, uh, to, to, to describe my shot. Usually I draw the whole film in storyboard in a cute car, a small one, and then I stick it on the wall, I start to edit my film. So I know uh, how, I mean, the crew will know how's my vision. So that's the way, oh, yeah. Yes, I have a follow-up question for you. I mean, since you mentioned that your childhood dream was to become a cinematographer, and you did it, I mean, you won the award, but now you are not the cinematographer, but a director. I mean, how, why is the change? Uh, maybe I'm more interested in telling a story. Yeah, so I mean, uh, maybe I, I'm still very interested in cinematography. I mean, if someone find me, I will try. <laughs> but uh, at this moment, I'm more interested in telling a story, yeah. Okay, so I will ask Mr. Hans from, I mean, since we are talking about Vicky mentioned that uh, he likes the smell of film, and then I just thought, oh, wow, you, 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 how do you feel about that? I mean, since you started making films, like, not in a digital age for sure, I mean, so at that time, I mean, did you, were you in love with the films that we were talking about? Um, I, that's a, I'm pretty pragmatic because um, techniques ev evolve and I think we should use the techniques at hand. So I think we ha would have to have the ch chance, for example, to shoot the last film. On film, maybe, but the problem was 
the only lab available was uh, the laboratory in Rome, and the laboratory in Rome was famous uh, by normal film times when they had a lot of uh, material running through to be really awful, so um, it was no real choice for me uh, to use this lab, and so it was over. Uh, thinking about shooting the film on celluloid. So we shot it on digital and I don't regret it actually. So it gives you new tools at hand and meanwhile I think with the great latitudes of the cameras and the color rendition they have now, uh, I don't think it's such a big loss to be honest. The only thing that gets lost is that uh, in previously you didn't have so many monitors on set, and now you have monitors on set, and everybody thinks he has all the film when he's watching the monitor during shooting, and people don't go to the cinema to see their dailies, this, the things that you, that you have done, so that you have a, a feedback on what you're doing. So people start shooting films for these little screens, and they will be projected on the big, big screen. It's a big difference, so you have to have the feedback during shooting, is my opinion. So this is the biggest loss, in my opinion, uh, about film. And it's interesting what you said about the comics, because I can absolutely relate to that, because mm -hmm. there's a strong relation between the comics and, mm -hmm. and films. Yeah. But on the other hand, when working with Christian, we work really different. We never have a storyboard. We only have, in the first films, we had shot lists. Mm -hmm. This means we knew which shots we need for the scene to tell it right and um, to, to put our emphasis and our focus in there. Um, but then, by the acting and uh, the, the original sets, um, the film gains so much more in depth that we couldn't have produced it in, 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 in uh, uh, storyboards. Mm -hmm. So in my opinion and in my way of making films, it would have been a big loss. Yeah. Because I love the, the, the accidents, that happen oh, yeah. well, from one day or to another you can't shoot on these locations you have to find something really quick mm. sometimes it, it's a real gain mm. it's not always has to be a loss mm. you see so did you experience like any accidents like on site i mean even if we were decrypted with the storyboard yeah actually the storyboard is my foundation because i'm a new director i have to be well prepared honestly but actually uh, when i when i draw all the storyboard i will usually not bring it on set because I already memorized all the thing. The, the purpose of the storyboard actually not only showing the crew, actually it's for me how I, how, uh, how my, I visualize the, the film. But after that, I mean, I go to the location and I will have new idea with my cinematographer. That's always happened. And sometimes, I mean, I also have experience on the, the location is not the same, but the, my storyboard actually is drawing by that location. But so, I mean, I'm actually shooting at the drama and the actors themselves, they're acting, the story. So actually, it's not bothering me, yeah. yeah. So the storyboard only the way to help me the to, reference. yeah, the reference, yeah. yeah. So Mr. Hans Fromm was talking about Christian. I mean, so maybe we wonder who's Christian. I mean, Christian is actually Christian Pessold. I mean, he's a veteran director in German cinema, and he's a, he is acclaimed of being the, one of the members of the uh, Berlinale Schule. It's kind of like the Berliner, Berliner School. I mean, this is kind of like new wave. I mean, acclaimed by the media, the French media and the foreign media. Yeah, and so he's one of the pioneers in the German filmmaking industry. And then Mr. Hans Fromm has been working with uh, director Christian Passold for a very long time. And basically, he is the cinematographer for all of his films. Am I right? Yeah. So some of the films have been shown in Hong Kong. Maybe you have already seen it before. Like uh, there's a one called Barbara, and there's one called Phoenix. I mean, they were shown in the Hong Kong International Film Festival and commercial release before. And then this year we have Transit. Yeah, show earlier. I mean, in March or April in the HKIFF. Yeah. So I would like to know. Uh, maybe Han Mr. Hans Fromm can share with us. Uh, the working experience with uh, Christian Pessel. You mentioned a little bit before, and uh, how did you get started with him, and, and what kind of director is he like? I think one of the greatest qualities of Christian Pessel is that he's very uh, decisive. He knows exactly what he likes and what he dislikes. And I think this is also what maybe is the foundation for the Berliner Schule, because it was uh, Christian Pessel and two of his communitants in Berlin uh, Angela Schanedek and um, Thomas Arslan and some other young directors who were studying in uh, the Berliner Film Schule, they sat together, they watched films and discussed almost every frame of the film and I sometimes took part in these seminars where we 
screened the film on, on, on the screen. By that time, we didn't have paper days. So we took the, the film print into the editing room on the table and really discussed every shot by shot. By shot. So, <clears throat> and they developed a certain, um, I always had the feeling it's a sort of a restriction. That they mean you, you don't show off with a camera. Why do you do this shot? Just to, 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 to brag about it. The focus, their focus went to the story, to the personal experience of their heroes in their films. And so there was a time when critics, in, especially Rainer Ganzera in, in Munich, discovered there is a similarity about these films and started to connect that. And then he called it Berliner Schule because the students came from Berlin. Meanwhile, they would collect more people like that uh, within. Maybe Christian is, is out of it now, I don't know. So because it's just a label actually, but it's still a, a sort of a, a seriousness, seriousness about what you how you tell your story. That you are very strict about the, the uh, uh, instruments that you use uh, to tell your story in the film. Yeah, I mean, yeah, so I'm, I'm sure that some of you have already seen the films before and uh, yeah, so we are talking about the Christian Passport and then the filmmaking experience and then... Uh, but I would like to know, I mean, since you spent so much time with Christian, I mean, so uh, uh, have you considered working with other filmmakers as well or he, he has already taken all of your time? <laughs> Actually, I reserve my time for Christian, sort of, absolutely, because but he only makes uh, a film every two years because He's an author filmmaker, this means uh, he writes the story and he directs the film, he cuts the film, he brings it to the festival. So this is pretty time consuming, so more than two, uh, a film every two years is not very likely, let's say. And so I also, of course, work with different directors and um, yeah, and I enjoy that, of course. Uh, some young, young directors come to me and, and also this is a great experience because then you can help them develop their own vision for the films. And, um, yeah, I, I remember a time when I was teaching at the DFFP, the young students asked me, so now we have to do all Berlinale, uh, Berliner Schule films? Um, nope. <laughs> so what do you think about the, yeah, what do you think about the younger generation? I mean, the young generation directors, I mean, as you mentioned, like, what do you think about their creativity or, or when you teach, I mean, What's your impression on them or on their works? There are so many and they are so individual that, that I wouldn't uh, dare to say anything uh, general about them, that they're, they're boring, they're whatever. No, there's a new generation, and you, like in every generation, you have talents and you have losers. <laughs> yeah, okay. there's also Johnny Tose, yeah. Yeah, okay, so we are talking about uh, like um, mentor or, or the new generation, and then uh, we all know that uh, Trevisia, I mean, the film was produced by Johnny Toe's film company. I mean, he was kind of like Johnny Toe's is like the master. Yeah. He is the master. Yeah. yeah, he's the master. And then he offered a chance for you, for the new filmmakers, to make your own film. So can you talk about your relationship? I mean, what did you learn from Johnny Toe? I didn't learn anything from him. <laughs> to be very honest, it's shocking. Yeah. He's uh, su such a master, you know. Uh, the, the experience with Johnny Toe is very funny. I didn't see him very often, honestly. And he didn't comment on my film. And uh, because, I mean, uh, our previous film, actually, uh, we are working on this for five years, three and a half year to develop the script, and then one year for editing. And then the production period, actually, is very short, only two months. And then I shoot only for 10, 15, 15 days, maybe. And the experience was um, Johnny Toe uh, is like a father to me. I mean, everyone think that he is very, very, um, his temper is really bad. Right. Um, yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, have a very, very uncontrollable temper, you know. <laughs> On set, he's the Can't god, you know, it. honestly. Yeah, yeah, he did. And I went to visit his film set, and I really, really feel shocking because I dare to stand in front of him. Yeah, because when he watched the location, everyone will go behind him. Yeah, he's that kind of guy. So yeah, that's what I have to tell you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But, rooms, yeah. but very funny because uh, he find us as a new director. He want to train us, and then actually I was like go to the university, and he is the teacher of it, and he's the professor of of of, of 
the Milky Way, the Milky Way University. And I studied there. Um, and the, the, the funny thing is I went to a film festival with him twice, and in Italy and also in France. And he offered us a lot of dinners. Yeah, that's my impression. Dinners. <laughs> yeah, and not talking about film, yeah, dinner. Yeah, wine, hams, you seafood. Know, yeah, seafood, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. And why? Because uh, he's, he, he wants us to experience the festival. Mm. Yeah, the best part of the festival, yeah. Eating. <laughs> and um, uh, be honest, I mean, um, he pushed us to our limits. Yeah, he didn't tell what tell us what to do. So did he yell at you because I have no, to no, tell no, Mister from that never, like yeah. when he is directing his own films yeah. on set. Yeah. I mean, he is well known for like yelling at the actors or actresses, like uh, losing their temper and then just leaves the scene. Yeah, because of course he's a respectable director. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. He never yelled at us. Yeah, he respect us because we got the creativity of the film. Yeah, and the experience was like um, he won't tell you what to do. He will tell you what you can't do. Yeah. yeah, 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 you cannot do this way, you cannot do this way, yeah. <laughs> so it was, was it like a nightmare when you were producing, I mean, creating this film? I mean, since it took you like five years? Five years, yeah. Yeah, yeah. for this movie. Yeah, that's true. And uh, yeah, it was a nightmare, I don't want to mention it again, yeah. <laughs> what did you learn? I mean, what did you learn? I mean, uh, since honestly, this is your yeah, first yeah, no, no, no. Because uh, every week I got a meeting with them, and then what I learned is about uh, writing, a, writing a script is based on the character and this. Yeah, the character is the core of the, of the script. And uh, yeah, that's the most important part, I think. Yeah. So for Mr. Troms, so since you are working with Christian Peso for such a long, long, long time, I mean, so I guess you must have built a very sound relationship with him. I mean, maybe you don't need to talk so much with him. I mean, you know, you already know what he's thinking. Is it like that, or I mean, do you have any arguments with him? I mean, how did you get along with him? Um, our prepara preparations were very, very extensive and very long for this, for let's say the first five films or something, and they got shorter and shorter and shorter. And now we meet. We he talks to me about the premises, about his emphasis and on the film. What's really interesting because, of course, I never had the read of the script by that time. And um, then we meet regularly during the, the location scouting. He tells us which, which shots he gonna, gonna, wants, to, wants to make. And um, then he takes a really long, 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 long time for rehearsals on the shooting day. Mm -hmm. yeah. And um, after these rehearsals, um, I take some pictures during the last rehearsal for the whole team. Everybody comes in and watches what, what, what they produced. And um, something like half an hour later, mm -hmm. the actors are ready from the makeup and the light is set up and we shoot. Yeah, so when did you first start working with him? I mean, how did it happen? And then, um, so, yeah. Like, you mean in 1994? Yeah. <laughs> how do you get to know him? I mean, how do you, and then since then, I mean, you have been working with him like for almost all, I mean, not almost, but all of his films. I mean, there must be something that attracts you, I mean, about this person, this director. Um, what I really love about him is he's, he's, uh, he follows his own instincts and in his own consciousness. This means he does not refer too much to other people or other films or other. We always have references, sort of, but we uh, don't try to copy that. Yeah. So it's just something we got in the back of our minds when we start shooting. Like, for example, the reference for uh, for Phoenix was uh, expressionism and, and film noir. Mm -hmm. And uh, a person that's insecure in this world, this were some keywords that we had for, for starting uh, uh, to work on the film and think about the images and the lighting. I, <laughs> and um, so I lost it. Lost it. Um, Something that you like about him? Or yeah, yeah, yeah. Him. That's what I like about him. And uh, when we shoot, we do them, don't do that many takes and that many shots because he knows very pre exactly. precisely what he wants. For example, just one little uh, story. We, we shot on film, maybe usually a shooting ratio between 1 by 6 or 1 to 1 by 10. And when he did the first digital film, we had 1 by 5. Because he thought, okay, now I can shoot everything. No, I don't want that. I want to be more precise than I was uh, when I was working on film. Um, that's one 
this is one thing that you really can like about him. And uh, it makes it really easy. You don't have to shoot that many takes. It takes a lot of time of, of your day, so he has time to work with the actors and to, to really produce a scene uh, instead of shooting millions of takes uh, out of insecurity. Because the problem is the next take has to be better than the, first, the one before. And if this wasn't better, then you have to know another one, another one, another one. You never get to a point, yeah. actually. And then you end up in uh, editing the scene by millions of these takes, or maybe take the first one. <laughs> it happens a lot. Yeah. Also, there's people who, who do, uh, plan to edit the, the scene from, one sh from millions of takes, though it was the same shot, sort of, um, in the editing room to build the scene from the best acting, sort of. Uh, in the end, they take the first one. Yeah. Very, so very often, because often. the actors are fresh, mm. yeah. the scene is new, and at a certain point, you can do it like Bresson. Yeah. Bresson, he shot something like 50 takes, because he had uh, no professional actors, and his uh, intention was to make them exhausted. That they don't think anymore when they play, that they just um, give away the scene. So um, there's another way to achieve that. And one important thing about Christian is he's really decisive about that. So among his films, which one do you like the best? One of them. <laughs> Sorry, there is no film I don't like. Okay. No. Yeah, so okay. Christian always complains about Cuba Libre or the first films we did, maybe. I don't. I, I like them all for their, for in, in their point, in their, in their time, absolutely. And some films, like uh, of Demon, when I, when I start watching this film, I end up watching the whole thing through. Because I'm still sort of amazed, not by my work, but the film mm -hmm. itself. Okay, yeah. So since Mr. From was talking about the references and inferences, he mentioned that uh, Christian Passolt didn't wasn't influenced like by anyone. I mean, or other genres or things like that. But for Vicky, yeah, yeah. he was influenced by genres, of course. Yeah, like uh, like the Nouvelle Vague, like the New Hollywood cinema is really important. We discussed a lot about that and watched a lot of these movies yeah. and took them as his inspiration. This is the important thing. You take it as an inspiration, you try not to copy anything because the copies yeah, yeah, yeah. never works out. Yes. I'd like to echo something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Since, I mean, yeah, yeah, because I got my training in UK and uh, their, their filmmaking way is very similar because I want to take their point is the rehearsal, how important is it? Uh, usually, I, uh, on a film set, I mean, in Hong Kong, I mean, they rarely rehearsal. Yeah, they sometimes they set all the light, put the actors in it, and then they act and shoot. I think the whole crew don't know what happened. But the way I shoot is like I do a rehearsal, I, I kick out all the people. And only my cinematographer here and my assistant director here. And uh, we will spend like an hour doing the rehearsal on set, which is really, really important. Why? And then it's like a, it's like a theater work. And uh, when I rehearse, and then the drama is nearly there, the acting is nearly there, and then I release all the crew come here and watch, like a play, you know, in the theater, and then they know exactly what the shooting is. Sometimes in Hong Kong, uh, the film makers like okay, shot by shot, they like uh, they like uh, uh, do it that way. So the whole crew don't know what happens sometimes. Only the directors will know. Sometimes the directors don't know honestly. Yeah. And uh, yeah, that's that's yeah. I I see that a lot. Yeah, and uh, so the rehearsal is really important for everyone on set, and the actors know what's going on. I mean, the crew know what's going on. I mean, they will involve in the project more. I mean, emotionally. Yeah. Yes, and since we are talking about references and inferences, I would like to know. I mean, Vicky, when you made the film, I mean, since this is produced by Johnny Toe, and Johnny Toe is a master of crime movies. I mean, and yours is also a crime genre. So. Like people will directly think, okay, were you subconsciously influenced by him, or in terms of style or storytelling? Um, he's a he's a grandmaster. I mean, it's difficult to copy his work, honestly, and um, and he warned us in person. I mean, don't copy me, you know. You <laughs> yeah, that's true, and uh, because you you can't, yeah. You is you, you know. I want to I want you to bring your own vision, not my style, you know, and uh, he don't want to see a Johnny Toe film, I mean, yeah, that, that's, that's, that's uh, what he told us. And then actually, very honestly, some critics, I mean, uh, said that, okay, we uh, tried, I mean, the, the outcome, I mean, it's very like Johnny Toe, I don't know why, honestly, 
and uh, yeah, yeah, yeah people, people did say, say that, this yeah. way. I think it's not about the, the style of how we shoot the film. It's about the story, about the main themes, about the character, about the dialogue. The actors. Yeah, the actors. Sometimes, I mean, maybe this element will make it like the Johnny Toe, yeah, I don't know. Because, uh, yeah, for Johnny Toe, I mean, he has a pool of actors whom he likes to use all the time. Yeah, and I also realized that, like, for Christian Passolt, for Barbara and for Phoenix, I mean, he's using the same leading male and female lead. So is it one of his characteristics, like, okay, so he's kind of the auteur director, and then he likes to employ, I mean, he likes to put the same actors or actresses in all his films, or... I think for directors it's not always easy to adapt to the new directors, uh, actors because uh, you don't know what you get. So if you have an actor that you can really work perfectly with, it's absolutely uh, understandable that you will continue to work with it. So like last time uh, we shot with Mariam Zaria once more, she plays in, in Transit. Mm. And uh, maybe that's going to come more. <laughs> yeah, so is Christian Pesso developing a new project right now at the moment and I mean are you getting prepared or? Yeah, he's, he's writing at the moment and uh, we don't know when he's going to show it. <laughs> okay, so for the meantime, are you doing the teaching or I mean while waiting for his new work? I mean, so are you going to work with other young filmmakers or? Yes, um, I'm right now in the middle of a financing of a project which I don't have any influence on. This means I have to wait and maybe I should in January, but I don't know yet. Okay. Yeah. It's yeah. Already. <laughs> yeah, three months away. Yeah, so uh, we, earlier, I mean, in the seminar, we also talked about the Berlinale Film Festival. I mean, both of them have been to Berlinale. And uh, Vicky's film, Trevisia, was premiered, I mean, for the first time, I mean, in the Berlinale Festival two years ago. And then maybe you can talk about the experience. I mean, what did you get from the festival? This is, that okay, was yeah, your yeah, first yeah. time. Yeah, the film was there, was uh, in 2014, as mm -hmm. I remember. And uh, we were, we get in into the forum. When I first knew there about this news, I was shocked, you know, wow, my film got to Berlin, you know, it's, uh, it's a dream to us, honestly. And uh, when we get there, I mean, uh, I was very nervous because uh, the film is not totally complete at that moment. Uh, I mean, the mixing is not complete, the CG is not complete, and also the music is not complete. I mean, the songs, it's different version, you know, yeah. The very famous, uh, the, the end credit song is different. And yeah, yeah, yeah. But I was so touching because I, I involved in this project for five years. I, I was like in a tunnel without seeing any light, you know, <laughs> honestly, yeah, it was, yeah, I saw the exit there because the film is, will be, will be screened very soon. And I remember the first screening in the forum is for the critics and the journalists, and uh, we will receive our result in the next day, maybe, in the, in the variety, you know, in the Hollywood Reporter. And I was so, I was crying, I remember when I see the cute outside, yeah. There was many, many people queuing outside to watch my film. I, I can't imagine because that five years is difficult for me. It's, you know, uh, I was working on 30 minutes script, you know, <laughs> not one and a half hour because we got three directors in this, in this film. And I, I, was, I was crying honestly because uh, emotionally it's really touching because the project come to an end. I mean, uh, of course, I mean, after the Berlin premiere, we go back and night by night doing the mixing and renew the music. Yeah, that's true. But the foundation there, the story there, and it's our first uh, group of audience uh, by that time. So it's not my first, it's not our first experience. I mean, uh, uh, the, my film screen on the screen is not my first experience, but this project is kind of different. It's very special to us. And um, when, when we sit down there and the audience with us, and then, I mean, I was so worried about the cultural difference, honestly, because some of them, some of the issues, some of the joke, or some of the dialogue is very local, very Hong Kong. And the translation is not that good, honestly. It's difficult to translate sometimes. And I was so worried about they don't get it, but it's not a problem. Yeah, it's become a universal language to me, to, to them, to the audience. They, they know it well. I mean, I was shocked. It's a good learning experience for me too. And after that, I mean, I, mean, I was sitting there with the audience and listening all their 
reaction, including the breathing, the laughing, the crying, you know, that kind of thing. And every sound effect in my head, I still remember that. And after that, uh, the QA session is lots of fun because they are not asking the film. <laughs> they, yeah. yeah, most of them ask asking about their politics environment in Hong Kong. I mean, how it, how I mean, how is it? I mean, after twenty years of handover to the China government, you know, kind of. And uh, yeah, I try to answer them in a good way. Yeah, and since you're talking about Berlinale, before we came here, we were talking about the uh, the, 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 the ambience, I mean, or the audience of Berlinale. And then uh, I remember in one particular year, there was a Korean blockbuster showing. I also told Mr. Harper uh, from uh, that um, it was a huge film. The director was very famous. The actor the, is a top, top class actor. And the very first comment made by the audience is, the very first one, not a question, but he said, this is a rubbish, this is trash, <laughs> with anger. <laughs> yeah, so I just told Mr. Rom, wow, so Berlinale, I mean, mm, it's special in this way, I mean, I mean, like, because if you go to Cannes Film Festival, there's basically no Q&A, <laughs> just meet and greet. <laughs> well, in, in, I think in Cannes, they also some, have some of them. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Not, a lot like all of them, yeah. But uh, Berlinale is an audience festival. You always have to remember that. So everybody can go in there, and some people like to produce themselves in there. So one should never put any weight to any comments like that, because what's that? There's no question. So maybe the only reaction would be, so what's your question? Maybe, because... It's a wise way. Yeah, yeah. so... Yeah, you really should... Think. And then, Maybe I can, can also add something to your experience yeah. with the Berlinale. One of the really uh, most precious moments you have is to see the film with an audience, not just because the audience is there, because you, you don't hear it or something. You sense, you start to watch your own film yeah, with it true. through the eyes of the audience. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, and that's this true. is a really great experience if you're a premiere on, on the Berlinale. Yeah. And yeah, yeah. If you're in the Berlinale Palace, then you have the great yeah, experience yeah. of everybody, everybody yeah. walking out if you don't yeah. like the film. We had that once, but uh, the last yeah. times everybody came back from the toilet. Yeah, I can share more on this because, uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, because as a director, I already I already watched the film for thousands of times yeah. because during the mixing, yeah. during the color correction, and all of it, I I'm so difficult as an audience and watching the the film as a cinema. I got a very good experience two days ago. I just finished a TV drama here in Hong Kong for the fire service department, and actually I pushed my producer to screen it in cinema. Yeah, it's a TV drama. Remember, it's the RTHK drama, and uh, because I because I involved in the editing progress and the grading and the mixing progress, I already watched it for hundred times, and I, I starting get no feeling about it because yeah, I mean, uh, but by that time I I, I I I tell myself I need to be an audience to watch my film there. So I mean, I experienced two days ago, and I was still touching and crying. Yeah. So I believe Mr. Fromm has been to so many film festivals. I mean, not only Berlinale, but maybe other film festivals as well. So how is it different or, or, or Berlinale from other film festivals, you think? I haven't been to that, that much festivals. <laughs> I don't travel all the time. We're not always invited because we're the team. The, the cinematographers, the, the great audience wants to see the director and the, the actors usually. Um, so. Can I say the, the great thing about the Berlinale that I always experienced, and I went there since the 80s, um, was I can see films uh, from all over the world that I never will see anywhere else again, because um, they don't, they won't find the distribution in Germany or they won't come to TV, and so it's it's a great opportunity in a festival like the Berlinale. The um, competition films I watch, of course, when I'm having a film in competition, and I want to see. Um, the other ones doing, how they're doing. But uh, um, otherwise, if I don't have a film there, I'm not, except if it's friends or it's something really I've yeah. known where so I want to see a new film by Ozon or whatever. Yeah. So since you're in Hong Kong right now, so I must ask this question. I mean, so are there any Hong Kong directors or films that you've watched and you like or you know? Well, what should I say? It's. Uh, uh, Wong Kar Wai, absolutely, in the film or no, In the Mood for Love is a masterpiece. Absolutely, there is no doubt about it. I really loved it. And uh, um, Ang Lee, 
you see from from Hong uh, Kong? From Taiwan, he's, yeah, but he's, he's from Taiwan. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and one of my absolute all-time favorites is uh, Goodbye South, Goodbye by Usasian. Absolutely, I love his cinema. He's really great. Yeah, okay, and I find a very interesting parallel since Mr. From is talking about Wong Kar Wai, because Wong Kar Wai also has a long time cinematographer, Christopher Doyle, just like you and Christian Pessold. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, yeah, so, we now can see the audience's friends who have heard a lot about the film or the film's sharing. I also want to say that you don't have to be so bad. You can ask a question. So if you have any questions or comments or if you want to know about filmmaking in Germany, I mean... As we know, uh, being a cinematographer is a very passive. So we don't have any chance to control a project or something. Uh, normally, um, sometimes you have to be a director and create a project. You have to write something to create a project. You waiting a chance or for something or do you think is? Uh, I'm because I'm very confused about the way to go. Uh, sometimes being a cameraman or DOP is just like I'm, I'm waiting a good director, I'm waiting a good script and something. But being a director is you can create something new and you control everything. The owner belongs to the director. <coughs> Sorry? Most of the owner belong to the director. Yeah. Well, it's not, not just the, the, the owner, but I, I so absolutely get what, your point. What is the advice uh, you can give the new uh, DOP or new camera? Uh, how to control their way? <laughs> how to control their hearts? Or not, not, not to control, not to write something. Be a DOP and how? I don't know how, how to, how to do it. Well, if you don't do, I, I don't know. Do you, are you studying on a, on a film academy or? No, I normally I work as a, a cameraman, mm. but I sometimes I think Hong Kong we don't have a chance to be a cameraman. We have many chance or many foundation for the director, but we don't have any foundation, any credit for the cam cameraman for the DOP. So. Everyone want to, to do a want to be a director. So this is a question. <laughs> Whether I wanted to be a director. What is your experience to to for your opinion? Well, I love my job absolutely, and uh, <laughs> it's the best job in the world. And I never would share one second with a director. Sorry, <laughs> because it's so many decisions that you have to make. You have so much control. I control my department, and I'm really satisfied with that. Um, it's really, a, of course, it's always a, a question of chance and of uh, talent, whether you have a chance as a cinematographer or not. Um, the only recipe that I, that I can give is um, actually to study. If you go on a, on, onto a film academy or something, and there you have the chance to connect with directors. This is the way I did it because in my time, the. the Berlin Film School, they didn't have uh, cinematographers. Mm. So I was on a stupid school that didn't, didn't have directors. So uh, I thought, okay, what, what am I going to do? What am I doing? So I went for seminars at the, at the director's film school that they have with me. I met directors there and uh, started to make films. That's actually how I met Christian because uh, I was doing my first long feature, it was a credit film of Michael Frerichs. Uh, a comedy tone of, of Christians, and by that time they helped each other out. And Christian was acting in one scene of, of the first feature I did there, and he did the sound in the next scene. So we came together, we talked shortly, and I think he liked what I did there, so he called me for his first feature, uh, I think one or two years later. Yeah. So maybe Vicky can also share your experience. The culture here is Europe a bit Europe. different, honestly, right. because we always meet our. I mean, when I was studying in UK, I always meet someone in the pub, you know. <laughs> because <laughs> I honestly, yeah, it's all about. I mean, I'm not joking, because uh, I met my uh, composer there, 
Honestly, yeah, yeah, yeah. Why? Because um, every day after school, we go into the pub together. And with other film school, maybe other department, I'm talking about connection. It's all about connection. And I also think that, I mean, as a cinematographer, maybe a little bit passive, but you can always do something, honestly. You can shoot something without, I mean, to showing your talent, your skills. I mean, for example, you're very good at time lapse, do the time lapse, and then someone will find you and pay you to do the job. Honestly, yeah, if you are really good on music video, you make a music video without any budget, it's fine. Because the, 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 the equipment now is, I mean, you own it, right? And it doesn't cost you any money, you know? You find someone, their lack of budget to do a music video, and then you offer yourself. I mean, I, then it will become your portfolio, you know? And then after that, I mean, you know more people, more directors, I mean, you can propose to them. Maybe you, sometimes, I mean, um, after I, I, I got, I got some award, some cinematography will come to find me. Yeah, by Facebook, I mean, they, I mean, they will say, usually say, hey, I, I, I admire your work, I love your work, something like that. And then, and then they will send me some show reel. And some of them is really good. Maybe, I mean, I put it in my mind sometimes, I mean, I, as a film project, I will find him. Music video, I will find him. For example, some TV commercial, I will find him. I mean, I always got some uh, commercial uh, job. And then I use different cinematography, uh, cinematographer. So I mean, you can always be active to to create someone to show some, uh, show other people your talent. Not only to director, sometimes producers, sometimes your friends. You never know who will find you next. You know. But I mean, uh, I would say you always got prepare. By your, I mean, prepare yourself. I mean, you 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 read more about. I mean, not only the books, videos. I mean, uh, to I got I remember I got a friend. I got a friend, and uh, he's very good at um, color correction. He's a cinematographer, and then he he do the grading by himself, and very unique. And there sometimes the um the commercial world will see that wow, I love the tone and the mood. So like, and I will find him. It's easy. Yeah, sometimes it happens. Yeah. Yeah. So I mean, you want to write your own story and become a director, or I mean, do you want to be working as a cinematographer? <laughs> no, don't don't consider your yourself as operator, yeah. because it's very confused. You know, sometimes I mean the the translation of camera operator. I mean, so what is your creative way? You know, so the better way is called is a, a director of photography, right? And uh, yeah, that's that's a di a little bit different. Yeah. Don't consider yourself as an operator. I'm not achieving director's vision. No, don't don't think that way. Think that okay, I'm helping the director to achieve his vision. That's, that's the point of, uh, to, to say it. Okay. It's a bit from what we with what Vicky said. I mean, like, you are not just operating for... Not in secret. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, but, but I think your, your, your uh, hint is, is absolutely right, because in the beginning, you have to do a lot of uh, stuff for free and uh, have to, try to show off that you can do something. So you find directors or young filmmakers who want to do their own st stuff and, and you should put them for free. Yeah. You never get paid for them. Yeah. Oh, okay. um, so sorry, my question is, uh, so we're living in a world with uh, a lot of YouTube or with a lot of um, storytelling through the web. So a lot of, I, I feel like a lot of cinematography or a lot of visuals are very generalized. So whenever, well, maybe not film, but just in general, I, I think everybody's starting to have the same mindset as to how to tell a story. So I guess my question is, as somebody who likes to shoot visuals, um, and you've have you both of you have so long you know experiences, how uh, is there a way or is there a technique that you kind of have for yourself to improve through each project, or you just like? just drill through each project until you just become better and better and better? Like, what do you tell yourself to get better? Oh, I don't talk to, my, to myself like that. I watch my projects and I, I see what I've done right and what I've done wrong. And uh, get the feedback from the people and some, some of it you can accept, some you have to ignore. It's, it's a normal process of sort of improving. Uh, nobody is, is a master from, from the start. 
but um, as I'm teaching a lot and, and sometimes I have to work with very young students who do their first films, there's something you always can find that is talent. And this is something you can learn. We can learn the film school. Uh, the film school, this is probably why your experience was that frustrating, but uh, don't do that, don't do that, don't do that. That's how teaching and filmmaking is, sort of. But on the other hand, we have 100 years of film history or more. Um, so nowadays, there's a lot of shit allowed. So you only have to decide which is, which is your way of telling the story. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. I will, I will say that, I mean, I, I always set a higher goal that I can't achieve. I mean, yeah, yeah, that's the way. For example, when I was shooting The Decisive Woman, my short film, my first, uh, second short film, actually. And uh, actually, by that time, I was challenge, challenging myself. I got car crash, I got gunfire, I got people jumping from 30 floor. And I said, don't hide a <laughs> skill, you know. That's the film uh, Johnny told find me. He watched it and he liked it. And yeah, yeah, yeah. And by that time, I mean, I know I, I, my ability is not, can't do it, you know. It's a challenge to me, to, the, to me and the whole crew. But actually, we did it. So, I mean, after that, uh, when you look back, you know, I mean, I know what I learned. Yeah. Yeah, so, uh, uh, yeah, which was right, I mean, because maybe all of you know that Flash Wave short film competition is funded by Johnny Cho and so that's why he can sculpt heavens easily I mean from the competition of course yeah. so do you still have any questions or comments? Hi, hi. <laughs> Hello, uh, my name is Jason Lee and uh, my question echo to this gentleman in the aspect of script development, not camera. And in the ecosystem of Hong Kong, to what extent do the director respect the script, original script? We always say the script is the principle of a film, but in actual situation, practically, it is true. Like yeah, I, I do agree this principle, but they are not paying for this, you know, <laughs> that's the problem. Yeah. Uh, you know, in Hong Kong, uh, a script writer is difficult to survive. Yeah, because I mean, not many projects going on and the film company not paying them. Yeah, <laughs> because it's, it, yeah, I, I will explain a bit to, to you. Because in Hong Kong, the system is a little bit different in, compared to UK or Europe. When I was studying UK and uh, someone write a script, they sell it to their film company. The film company will find a director to direct his, uh, his script. That's the, the way they work, you know. Sometimes they written and direct. I mean, a director will write a script and then sell it to, a, sell it to the film company, you know. In Hong Kong, it's very, very different. Uh, in Hong Kong, most of the time, is the big director have an idea and then he hires someone to write his script. It's not, I mean, to follow his order, actually, yeah. And uh, I mean, the, when the script is done and then the director change it a lot, <laughs> actually drop it, you know, <laughs> most of the time. And uh, I do agree, a uh, good script is the principle to the uh, good film. And, uh, but in Hong Kong, I mean, it's difficult to survive because there is, it's always underpaid. Yeah, to be honest, as a new director, I was also underpaid. <laughs> yeah. So, so yeah. is it the same case in Germany, like, like for the new filmmakers or new script writers? Do they have a hard time? Um, there is not one certain way how it works in Germany, sort of. Uh, so, for example, Christian is he's an author and a director. He directs his own films. He has not done any film that he has written himself. This gives him a very privileged situation, and also the shooting with him is, is very privileged, privileged, because we can change anything, anytime. He can really react to, this, to the locations, or to a new idea that comes in, or the actor that wants to change, or change the light. This is no big deal because it's it's his script, uh, and he sometimes he is his own uh, greatest critic. Actually, and when we the rehearsal, sometimes I hear the sentence, so "What did the author say again there?" Yeah. And he speaks about himself. Um, the other uh, um, system we have is, of course, the producers that um, take the the scripts and uh, try to promote them and yeah. find the director and find the whole crew. Um, there are some companies uh, that work like that, or maybe the most of the companies that do 
television work and, and some cinema work. There are not too many companies in Germany that uh, have the potential to finance the firms without funding or without a TV station. This is, this is in three companies maybe or four. You can, can really count them. Um, so most of them uh, have to rely on the books that they send in and then they get the funding for uh, for the, uh, uh, yeah, for, for the firm. Yeah, I'm sure Ricky can tell you more about the set stories for being a scriptwriter in Hong Kong later. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, for some people, yeah, they don't get paid. I mean, what are there any other people? Is there any other friends? Do you have anything to say? Yes, yes, yes. So, I would. I have a few questions would like to ask Mr. Hans Bond. And you have mentioned that you didn't write uh, draw any storyboard. So how you collaborate with the uh, director? Because for me, it's quite abstract. How you discuss the colors, the texture with the director? And the second question is, uh, as an independent filmmaker, and you, we always lack of budget. So how you do the cinematography with um, less lighting equipment do you have any suggestion on it and the third question is about uh, did any other art form influence you do you like music literature or or um, dance as well yeah thank you okay. uh, what was the first question what was the first give me a cue please mm, the collaborations uh, the the collaborations. Our storyboard yeah with our storyboard um, um, it's a consciousness about uh, um, that we we two agree, agree on that uh, what we will find on location and with the actors will never be the same that we draw into a, a little uh, frame. So um, uh, I think as Christian showed me a lot of films he liked and we watched along uh, even before the first film. We, we visited a seminar about uh, Bresson and really watched intensely films and discussed how these films are shot. So I think we had really fast, uh, and we grew up actually with the same social relation about films in, in, in German television and whatever was going there. So um, <clears throat> we have a really common sense what's right and what is wrong. So I always had the impression I have a good, good understanding for what Christian wants from the, for the, from the, for the, for the film. Actually, the first uh, films until 2010 or something, we shot without uh, video relay. There was no video at all. And sometimes he looked through the finder, but then he criticized me if there was something to criticize. But <laughs> at the dailies, we sat in the cinema. And, uh, yeah. But I think most of it he liked. So mostly, we discuss it. We talk a lot. And um, we talk also about the colors, of course. Where shall it go? I give him samples. When, if I want to suggest, suggest him, and he's always like he's always very decisive. He knows exactly this is right, this is wrong, and this is what I want. This helps a lot. So what was part so two? Is budget a concern for you? How do you deal with the lack of budget? Ah, okay. Um, actually, if you saw Transit or will see Transit, maybe it's tomorrow's screen at the uh, Greta Institute. Um, we had one big problem when shooting in Marseille that you have really narrow roads and you don't have a chance to block like 100 meters of parking space for your trucks. So we had to shoot on a really, really uh, small equipment. So it was not a budget decision in the first place, it was just a logistic problem that we have. We had a really small light on this one. And uh, first of all, the modern techniques help a lot. We have a great latitude, and you have to have a good eye for where come, does the light come, come from, and how to block it, and how to enhance it, in which moments, and um, so, actually. What's also always important, because we talk about the budget, I think you always have to think of the film in the budget uh, um, that you have. So, for example, writing something like an action movie with lots of uh, with lots of visual effects and stunts and whatever and burning cars, without money is stupid. Sorry, this is nothing else but stupid because you won't get achieve whatever you like. 
And this is one quality also from by Christian. Again, I have to drag again. Uh, he always is in budget. He always thinks in the budget. He thinks what uh, opportunities do we have, and what can we do to get around. For example, if you shoot in Marseille, you also have to consider that you don't have too many locations. So we pull together many locations to the same spot. We did, did some TV movies with, with this really low money <coughs> recently in Munich, and um, same thing. Uh, we needed uh, a hospital, we needed a police station, we needed several locations. We put it all in one building. Had some adjustments by the, set, by the, by the art department, maybe some compromises. I don't think so, because the film didn't suffer by that. And uh, um, the story is really written to the budget. And it's on the spot, and you make a beautiful film if you follow your dream, your 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 idea, and not any uh, illusions that you never can achieve. And lighting without uh, uh, too big sources is not that difficult anymore, and you need a lot of people, some people. So if it's getting compli complicated, you should have some people, and you can increase your lighting equipment, for example, for one day for this one scene where you have a night exterior and you have to set up all of, all of lights, then maybe you can talk to the production company to hire some more people and some more equipment for this one day, but not for the whole time. I think limitations also uh, have have the chance uh, for an opportunity. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, you can, Hitchcock is one of the best examples. He never should, he was allowed to show sex. What did he do? <laughs> yeah, so the third part of the question is, uh, any art form that influences you, I mean, that inspires you? Oh, maybe. If, if you grow up with culture, then there is, of course, a whole bandwidth of, of uh, art, and I wouldn't say any particular art that I experienced as a child, as a young man, and growing up, and young you know, um, would be my big influence on, on what I do on, on the film. But of course, I'm always interested in, 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 in uh, building the kind of, um, like uh, photography, painting, sculpture, of course. And, but I think it's, it's the whole sum uh, that influences you. And you pick, for example, like for uh, Transit, Christian Jones, as one reference was uh, the Italian serious painter, um, the Chirico, and um, yeah, then we use that. I used it in my part, especially for the colors. Um, yeah. Oh, so, Tausina is to now, so we have comments from the back. Thank you for sharing. Uh, my question is that I'm a university student, but I'm studying, uh, what I'm studying now is totally uh, irrelevant to filmmaking, but I really love like watch movies and I also write my stories as well. Um, uh, my question is, uh, do you have any advice how I can get into the, um, get more closer to the thing I like, like film, filmmaking? And besides, could you share us with some um, experience? How do you get into this industry? Thank you. Uh, yeah. <laughs> You know what I mean? Uh, Johnny Cho, uh, why he? Uh, I mean, he think of the fresh, fresh wave film festival. Exactly is your question. I mean, there. I mean, I know you are not a filmmaker or a film student, but many, many film students ask him, "How do I get into the industry?" So he make. I mean, he he, he make the fresh wave uh, film festival. I think what you need to do is um, make it happen. Yeah, you said that you get a story, right? You find your friends, I mean, or you do it by yourself, you make it happen, I mean, make the video, I mean, to shoot the story. Maybe you don't know how, maybe you need to find someone to help you. And uh, yeah, when it is done, you know how far you can go, honestly. Yeah, so I mean, yeah, you need to have something on hand, I mean, show it to people, and then the, so you can get into the industry. And I think, as I, I repeat again, I, about, it's all about connection. You know, you never know, I mean, uh, who you're going to meet. I mean, he will be uh, interested in your project, yeah. So meet more people, yeah. So are you, you've already got your story completed or are you still writing on it? Um, I have, I just like, I have many stories in my 
my head like because I traveled a lot so I just want to so I just uh, enjoy uh, I'm not finished um, I just in mind mostly in mind thank you so I mean as what Becky said I mean fresh wave fresh wave short film competition is a very important and practical and useful platform for potential new filmmakers. Good evening, and I have two questions I want to ask uh, 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 Mr. Hansborn. Uh, in the last week, uh, Wednesday, I have just watched the Phoenix, and I saw there is a lot of night scenes and I would like to ask some practical <laughs> questions like how do you choose the light source or how to uh, communicate with the gaffer and the, your crew because some cinematography maybe they have a well planned in their mind but they can't communicate well with their crew and the second question is um, what do you think about in the future, maybe there will be more female cinemato cinematography, uh, cinematographer. Sorry, I'm so nervous. Uh, in to the industry because in the past there are more male cinematographer than female. I think uh, this has in Germany at least, and in France maybe. Uh, evolved, evolved a lot now because um, mostly uh, cinematographers now come from film schools they have lots of opportunities to study and so the percentage of women has really increased I remember when I started most of the women they, they surrendered because they wouldn't get jobs or something Elfie yeah. Mikisch went through uh, Sophie Mantineau uh, she came from France to Germany she is still active as a cinematographer like Elfie Mikisch also but most of the other uh, ladies really, they, they surrendered. Nowadays, it is really different because they can uh, prove their, 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 their capabilities during their students' time. They can show their qualities as women, especially uh, with other women and men, um, that they have another approach to the, to the imagery. You can, sometimes you can see it was a woman that showed it. And um, especially also uh, for the mood when shooting. Um, so I, I can really say this is really evolving. I think it's going to be better and better in the future. So the other thing, how do you talk with your gaffer? Usually, um, when, I, when we start to plan, I meet with the gaffer and discuss the, the uh, general, general plan. For example, for the night exteriors for Phoenix, uh, Christian suggested me as one of the key words, expressionism. And this is something I really love to use for the day and night exteriors because I knew I've had these vast fields of, of gravel. And uh, if I wanted to do this the conventional way, I would have huge lights set up uh, and blow in because Berlin, after the war, it was a really dark place. There was no street lighting or nothing. The lights came from anywhere. They came from the buildings, out, out of the windows. And so I picked these two elements up and made this very expressionistic and punctual light mm -hmm. with the long shadows and spots here, spot there. And actually, on one of these large uh, scenes, there is something like five, five pictures and not more. It's, and it's small pictures. It's one case and uh, maximum two case. Um, and this is something I discussed with the, with the gaffer in a very short time. Actually, my gaffer, with whom I worked on, on uh, Phoenix, um, we worked together also side since uh, something like 25 years. So um, we have also a very great agreement on how we uh, approach things. And uh, we just discuss during the, the location scouting what kind of shots might there be and how we, uh, what kind of approach we choose. So when uh, before the rehearsal start, he has set up already the basics 
the huge fix, uh, fixtures, the, 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 electric, the electricity and stuff like that is already set. So then when the rehearsal is over and we know which shot we start with, he only has to make a few adjustments and put some lamps down from one spot to another. So we are going to take the last question since I think they are going to show a film very soon <laughs> I mean the house. Uh, good evening, I got three questions. And first of all, I would like to elaborate on the previous set, uh, questions. Um, someone has asked uh, how to get into the film industry and then you have mentioned uh, to join the uh, Fresh Ray competition. And, but I got a question is that because I'm not studying in film school as well. And then I suppose I got a script. And then how do I find all those professional crew in this case? This is my first question, and then the second question is that um, uh, now I I I write a film, uh, short film script, and I try to elaborate it into a ninety minutes uh, feature film. But I find that it is very difficult to do so because uh, uh, in a short film you have some key key scenes, and then you you will be okay. But in a ninety minutes film, you you have to do many. You have to elaborate into very details and then I, I would like to ask your advice how to achieve this and my third question is that um, uh, both you guys uh, have mentioned the importance of rehearsal and uh, recently I just fin finished directing my short film and then I find I, I find it rather difficult to um, to rehearse with my actors because I'm not sure I, I'm all, always got and uncertainty. I'm not sure how, how to rehearse them. Um, should I? Um, because to to some extent, I will over rehearsal. You know what I mean. And I, I would like to achieve certain kind of uh, spontaneity uh, among my actors. Okay. So how how do I achieve? I will it? try to answer your first question, and then I will answer the other question outside the cinema. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> the first question is uh, about the rehearsal. I think it's I mean it's very important. Why? Because you know, I mean, the whole crew know what happened. But for you, as a director or the creator of the story, you only need to know um, how's the level of the actors is going on. Sometimes, I mean, when the rehearsal, they are they are not full power. You know, they were just seeing the nice. I mean, walking the there, and then maybe seventy percent of their performance. But when you roll the camera, they would good uh, do the full power. But you need to adjust. I mean, you need to have kind of ruler in your heart. You know, you need you need, you need to adjust uh, through the monitor. I mean, you ask your, yourself as an audience, is that overacted? I mean, don't don't need to think a lot. Honestly, you just use your basic instinct to feel what they are acting. Is that convincing? Is that overact? I mean, uh, always ask yourself questions like this as an audience. You know, it's not that difficult. Honestly, yeah. Since we are running out of time, yeah, so I would like to take this opportunity to thank Mr. Hans from all the way from Germany and then to keep on this to share with us their valuable experience. So we can continue our chat outside the cinema, yeah. Thank you very much.